In this lesson, we're going to develop our idea of trig ratios a little bit, and we're going to answer, try to answer this question here, which is how can trig ratios be negative? And I want to give us a little bit of motivation. I've showed you this before, but what we're driving towards here is analysis of these wave-like functions. So this is a graph of sine of x, and you could even type this into your calculator at this point and see the same wave. So there's a couple things I notice about sine of x here. The first is that some of my graph right, some of my graph down here, sine of x is negative, right? And then like conversely, like over here, my x values are negative. So we need to know in order to evaluate this type of function, we need to know two things. Is one is how does sine spit out negative numbers? We haven't seen that before. And how do we deal with negative angles in sine? So we're going to tackle a couple of problems that are going to sort of introduce this notion of negative values of sine and our other trig functions as well. All right, and what I've given you here is I'm asking you to find the angle between the origin and a line through this point, negative 7, comma 4. So we'll plot the point that's about there, right? Oops. Negative 7, comma 4. And a line segment through the origin would be like that, right? So we're really, we're looking at this angle as angle Z, right? So notice right away we have an angle that's bigger than 90 degrees, so this can't really model a right triangle necessarily the same way. So we're getting more abstract. The way we're going to tackle this is we're actually going to make a triangle over here, right? So we're going to make the smallest triangle we can, and we're going to think about our angle as this angle here. Um, and then, then the reason this makes sense is then 4 is my one side and negative 7 is my x side, right? Um, just by, based on how the graph works. And then to get sine of z, well, sine of z is still opposite over hypotenuse. So I do need to do Pythagorean theorem. And that spits out the square root of 65. You can check that if you want. So that's the length of this segment here, square root of 65. So sine of z, well, would be opposite 4 over the square root of 65. And then we're going to rationalize, right? So that's going to be the same as 4 square root 65 over 65. And you guys are good at that pattern now. Cosine of z, same thing, adjacent over hypotenuse. And then we're going to rationalize. So right away, here is the difference, right? So my cosine is negative. And that's because my x value was negative, right? So that adjacent side is negative. Now, we've never really thought about negative distances before. But in this case, we're going to use these to represent these bigger angles. And then tangent of z, well, that's just opposite over adjacent. So 4 over negative 7, which is negative 4, 7. Okay? So right away, we have these trig ratios that are negative. And that's for quadrants other than 1. So remember our quadrants are 1, 2, 3, 4. So our trig ratios can be negative whenever we imagine ourselves in a quadrant other than that first quadrant. And the, the, that really means whenever we have an angle bigger than 90 degrees. And that kind of makes sense, right? It's very abstract, but like when we get an angle that wouldn't fit in a triangle, something different from what we would expect happens. And as we draw these, we'll find we don't even always need a point. So here we have this angle sine pi over 3, and I'm not so good always at thinking in radians, so I'm going to rewrite this as degrees. So 5 pi over 3, I can use my little trick, pi is 180 degrees, so I can substitute like that, and that ends up being, that's a 0, let me make that clear, that ends up being 300 degrees. And then I'm going to draw a line segment so we can analyze this. So to draw this, I like to think of like Tony Hawk doing like 180s or something like that. I'm going to label my axes first and then 360 or 0. So these can actually, this cycle repeats, right? That's part of how we get that repeating wave shape. So really we're doing sine of 300 degrees. And if I sketch this, well, sine of 300 degrees would obviously be between 270 and 360. So I'm just going to draw a line. And then, so here... This whole angle, this would be 5 pi over 3. And I'm thinking in both units now. 5 pi over 3 is what I'm asked. But really, I want to think about what this little angle is, right? 
So if this whole big angle is 300, well, this has to be 60, right, to make that full circle. And then notice this is one of my special triangles, right? So if this is 60, let's make it into a triangle right away. I don't have to be super precise about how long I make my segment, but I know my hypotenuse is 2. My longer side, opposite 60, is square root 3. And then my shorter side, opposite 30, is 1. Um, now notice, though, my this side, my square root of 3 is negative now because I'm below the y-axis. My x value is positive because I'm going to the right. And my hypotenuse I'm going to consider to be positive as well. It doesn't really make sense to say that's positive or negative um, because we can go both ways, right? So what I can say then is sine of 5 pi over 3, well, I just drew it. So opposite, negative square root 3 over hypotenuse. So it's negative square root of 3 over 2. So we're only going to worry about multiples of our special angles, but we can make those multiples as big as we want, and the, there's just this repeating cycle that happens where only the signs change. Pretty interesting stuff.